The next operation we need to do to uh, finish up this part is the contouring operation, which will remove the material uh, from the outside of the stock here down to the finished part that we want to have here. And so there's a, there's a few things we have to do in order to create this contouring operation. Uh, the, the first thing is we have to create a chain feature that defines where we want that contour to be. And th there's several ways that we can do this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use what we call the part profile. So if you go to the, uh, the create features toolbar, go to the part profile dialog, and open that up here. So in our part profile, it tells us we want to select the part. And so I'm just going to select the solid model that defines the uh, the part that we have here. I want to do a shadow so that will actually project it at the uh, at the plane of the XYZ axis here at the plane of the uh, the XY axis. Um, we can create a chain on the profile or not create a chain on the profile. Go ahead and say create a chain on the profile. Uh, I don't think it matters if we use the legacy method or not. And go ahead and click OK on that. And what it did is actually created a chain feature. Um, one that went around the outside boundary of the part. It created one for each of the through holes and for the through pocket. Now we don't need all of those. The only one we need is the one that goes around the outside boundary of the part, which on my list is chain number six. And just so I don't get confused later, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the other one. So, and so I've got that part boundary here selected. We're gonna select that go back to our solid mill traditional toolbar, go ahead and select the contouring operation. Now, sometimes we'll call this a side milling operation, but in Esprit, they call it a contouring operation. And it's actually gonna be really simple. We're gonna to go to the general tab. First, like any other operation, we're gonna decide what tool to use. And we're gonna use the, uh, the 3 8 inch end mill. Now, uh, we'll know that uh, our 3 8 inch end mill can go 6,000 RPM in the mini mill, which gets us to about just under 600 surface feet per minute. Uh, you can go ahead and look up on the, on the chart if that's correct, but I'm certain that it is. Uh, if I remember correctly, we go three inches a minute, uh, three inches per flute while we uh, feed in the XY here. And, um, since I know that it's not going to do any cutting while it's moving in the Z direction, I'm going to set this one to three also. Although, uh, if you look up in the charts, we set that slower when we're expecting it to do cutting when it's moving in the Z direction. I know in this case it's not going to, so I went ahead and set both of those to three. Um, our strategy tab here, we have to select a number of rough passes. And so the number of passes that it has to use to go from the, the stock material to the part is going to depend on the step over that we use. And we'll, uh, we'll actually get to put in that step over value as soon as we tell it that we want to do more than one pass. So let's just go ahead and tell it we want to do 10 passes. Um, and then it opens up our step over as a percent of diameter. And so uh, we actually want the tool to step over 25% of its diameter. And, uh, and so at 25% of the diameter, it probably won't take 10 passes to go from here to here. But what we can do is come down here to the stock automation, say stock automation trim, and then it won't make any extra passes. It will only, uh, it will only remove material where we want it to. So I've got my step over in. We're going to set it for 10 passes. We don't want to leave any stock allowance on the walls or on the floor. Our total depth here, now we have to decide what the total depth should be. And, and so we're going from the, uh, the top surface here where we've already actually faced off a little bit of that material, but that's okay. What I wanna do is I wanna go to the, uh, to the left view here. Look at our part and I actually wanna turn the fixture on so that we can see where that fixture is. And so, Whatever we do, we don't want the tool to go beyond this level down here at the, at the fixture because then the tool would crash into the top of the vice jaw. The, uh, if I put my stock on, we can see that the stock is sitting down there and held in the vice. We want the tool to definitely come past the bottom lip here because when we flip the part over, we're going to have to do a, a facing operation to remove the material that we were using to hold it in this side. 
So we definitely want it to go past this number. And so actually, if you look in the lower right-hand corner, it will tell you the, uh, the depth of the, uh, the cursor at that moment. And so what I'm seeing now is, uh, is 0.3 inches down. If I come down to uh, the top of the vise, I'm at 0.6 inches down. And again, that's measured from our Z0 on the, uh, on the stock material. And so I want to be somewhere between 0.3 and 0.6. I'm going to go ahead and go 0.35 inches for my depth. 0.35 inches for my depth. And the incremental depth for this tool, if we look up on the chart again, shows one times the diameter, which is 0.25 inches. Our starting depth is going to be zero, even though we don't have anything to cut for this five, uh, 50 thousandths up here. We'll go ahead and, and let it um, calculate from zero there. Uh, offset side left. Offset tool radius, yes. Cutter compensation, we're going to turn off. We'll talk about that later in the class. Um, in the advanced tab, no, we don't need to do any of these fancy tricoidal moves. Uh, trimming, collapse, all this stuff looks good. And on the links tab here, we're going to go with the defaults unless we see a problem and everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It should create that toolpath. Go back to our isometric view. And so it shows that the tool's coming down, cutting around here. Let's go ahead and simulate this toolpath that we just created. We run the simulation so it cuts off the corner here and it does not come all the way down and run into the vice jaw so that's a good sign. Go ahead and speed that up. And it looks like it has machined off that material there. It's come down and we've got this half of the part created without crashing.